Good morning, Pastor Brian here. Thanks for joining me today as we read a psalm a day throughout the book of Psalms. Today we'll be reading Psalm 85 together. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible as I do each day. I invite you to follow along in the the way that you find most meaningful, whether that's in a different translation or listening along or finding a copy of the Common English Bible, if that's what you would like to do. So let's get into Psalm 85 and see what it has to say. Lord, you've been kind to your land. You've changed Jacob's circumstances for the better. You've forgiven your people's wrongdoing. You've covered all their sins. You've stopped being furious. You've turned away from the burning anger. You, the God who can save us, restore us. Stop being angry with us. Will you be mad at us forever? Will you prolong your anger from one generation to the next? Won't you bring us back to life again so that your people can rejoice in you? Show us your faithful love, Lord. Give us your salvation. Let me hear what the Lord God says, because he speaks peace to his people and to his faithful ones. Don't let them return to foolish ways. God's salvation is very close to those who honor him, so that his glory can live in our land. Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. Yes, the Lord gives what is good, and our land yields its produce. Righteousness walks before God, making a road for his steps. Well, that's the end of Psalm 85. And I just want to point out what I kind of pulled out, what stuck out to me in this text. And that is, uh, starting at verse 9, it talks about God's salvation is very close to those who honor him. And so that glory can live in his land. And I feel like that is kind of the setup for the next two, which is why I included that one. But verses 10 and 11 Uh, Faithful love and truth have met. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the ground. Righteousness gazes down from heaven. I know we just read that, but I just, I wanted to read them again to really kind of uh, bring it back to our minds, to my mind, because it was what stuck out to me. But just that idea that when it comes to God's salvation and that God's glory is in the land, then it begins to talk about what are those things? Love and truth have met, meaning love and truth exist in that place and that righteousness and peace have kissed. There's this intimate relationship between righteousness and peace and that truth springs up from the ground and that righteousness gazes down from heaven. So just just this beautiful imagery of what it's like to live in God's promised land. And, you know, I would then extend that to, to just say living a life with God, living in, in a relationship with God and with one another as, as fellow Christians, as uh, fellow uh, people of the Abrahamic faiths, uh, meaning Christians and Jews and Muslims, you know, as we all draw our common ancestry back to Abraham, that uh, we are called through this psalm to have love and truth meet, to have to have righteousness and peace kiss, that we are called to be these people who are loving and kind and caring and, and generous. And, you know, and I don't say that to say, that we have to be, you know, perfect all the time. And I don't say that to say that we have to be pushovers because we're we're nice people all the time, as in we just let people do whatever they want because we're supposed to be nice, but that we are called to live in ways that are faithful to the gospel, which are faithful to God's word. And that that means uh, caring and loving for people in the ways in which God has called us to care and love for for those people. And so that's just really what stuck out to me is this idea of of these these important things meeting and having an intimate relationship with each other and that that then brings us closer to God's salvation to that that realization of what God's salvation is really like. And I hope that uh, you can 
find that place where you you truly feel God's love and God's presence and that uh, God desires these these wonderful, beautiful things for you in your life, even if you can't fully understand or grasp what that really means. And that's okay, because that's part of the journey of faith. What did you hear? What did you like? What maybe didn't you like? Write it down, share it with a friend, share it with us. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and God bless.